Going once, going twice, sold. You're listening to The Property Pod, an accessible and easy way to get into or help understand the goings-on of the property market. Join Aaron, John and Pat as they discuss all things real estate, most likely get sidetracked and then try and rein it all back in as they present The Property Pod. All right, welcome back to episode three. Morning, gentlemen. Three episodes down, I can't believe it. I know, how good are we going? I think we've had a few listens, which is good. We have. I actually, I've got something to bring up very soon, but we'll we introduce ourselves first. It's uh, I'm Aaron. I'm here to host the Property Pod, and I'm joined by my two real estate agent friends, John McGregor. Uh, g'day, everyone. Patty. Oh, and Patrick Berry. And I guess Patrick. I'll introduce myself. And Patrick <laughs> Berry. No, well, just jumping straight off the back, I've actually had some feedback from episode one. Oh, good. Um, and it was what to do with your brother. Oh, that's it. So they they were listening and they wanted to know if the stories that go into Rosehaven. So mm. just for context, if you haven't listened to episode one, John's brother is um, stand up comedian and actor Luke McGregor has a TV show Rosehaven, which is real estate based. Um, and they wanted to know if there are any stories that have come out of your dad, your mum, yourself, or anyone in the industry that have then gone into the show. There's been a few actually. So what what Luke and Celia wanted to make sure of is that though the show is fictional, that the practice and what they do is actually true to life. So they'll uh, they'll call up and ask about look how many days notice do you need for a vacant possession? What would you do in this you know multiple offer negotiation situation? What would this happen? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. But um, and then they will just build um, stories around the actual um, re- requirements by legislation, which is quite good. It gives a grounding to the show. Um, but there has been quite a few that, that happened um, that, that were like 90% true. Yeah. So there's there's one there's one episode where um, they got inspired by having all those charms on the front doors. Um, and Barbara, there's a scene where Barbara talks about this um, situation where she had to um, negotiate with a client who thought that a satellite dish on a roof was connecting with the aliens and was going to um, destroy the building. That was actually based on a true story that happened to Mum and I. Yeah. When we were um, strata managers, um, they one of the one of the neighbours had put on like an Ozstar dish, um, and one of the the next door neighbours had come in and said, "Oh, Julie, look, I'm really concerned that the satellite is going to be reaching out to the aliens, and they're going to be beaming their um, information <laughs> back to the." <laughs> so what, what do you do with that situation? Because obviously you're not dealing with um, it's not a logic. Well, it's a, there's a logical. S- Logic to it to some degree, yeah. so, but rather than just going saying, "Oh, you're insane," Mum actually went and got um, did all the research, assessed the power outputs of the satellite, and got all the scientific information, represented it to the owner, and said, "Look, look, I've got some good news. Um, we've gone behind the scenes and done the research for you, and we found out that these particular Ozstar dishes are not designed to penetrate any further than the um, satellites orbited in the Earth. So, any concerns around um, <laughs> the, um, reaching out further than is required? Yeah. Luckily enough." we don't have to be worried about and the owner's like oh that's really good news well that in that case they can keep the satellite dish wow um and so they, they, they threw that in as a little anecdote um side story that um barbara actually tells not not in in those words exactly yeah but that was just sort of a um you know a fun sort of uh, side one and i think there was one there was a look in the, the very first series this was luke's story i think where um when we were kids um uh, he, we, we never used to kill spiders. We used to trap them and throw them over the next door neighbor's fence. I remember this episode. Yeah, yeah so, <laughs> open so home yeah, in the backyard. Yeah, exactly. So the, the oh, the thought then was is that um, you know that little walk happens where they're thrown. You know, didn't want to kill the spiders, so they kept getting thrown over the neighbor's fence, and all of a sudden, you know, you end up with this giant um, like mess of spiders that never got killed, and they've started a new uh, family. So that's where that little yeah, yeah. came from. So. Um, they never really based any um, major story arcs on real events, but there were just little side stories that just sort of added humour here and there, or you know, could spice up a scene. Um, and we've got, you know, we just gave them dozens and dozens and dozens of situations. That ones from oh, actually, here was another one from a friend of ours. Um, the story where the goldfish gets stolen. Remember that? No, um, that was in se- I think it was in, in season, season two, three, season two or three, and the goldfish gets stolen. That was loosely based off a true story that happened to one of our friends in um, uh, Mount Mount Druitt, yep. um, where he's based now. And he ho- he had an open home where the, um, the, the his owner's goldfish was just you know basically swimming in its own mess. And some some person who'd been at the open home 
got out a knife and the fact that he's carrying around a, a knife at an open home is that's bad enough. Bizarre enough. And he's carved into the um, into the um, side table his uh, well, he is or her, I don't know, um, their mobile number and said they will take care of the fish. So they didn't steal the fish. They didn't leave a post note. They carved into the actual um, uh, like a, like drawer. you see in a tree when it's yeah, like that's it. Yeah, JM like, loves yep the they fish. Ca- they carved in their mobile number to say well, or, or either their mobile number or just said I'll take care of this fish for them, you know. And then that little fun story ended Could up. Could have just let the agent know. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? That's crazy. So he didn't. He didn't know. I mean, you're not going to walk around checking. Um, after an open home, every single little um, chest of drawers. So, of course, they got called back and like, well, what the hell? Lucky enough they were able to trace the person back with all their you know, records and stuff. But and did they look after the fish in the end? I think, well, I, did I don't the fish know. Go to did, a did, did the fish go to a better home? I don't know. Yeah. But, that, I mean, there was another little story. So, it's it's fun. You know, in, you think about what's happened to you, you over the years and you imagine thousands of agents around – some of the stories that actually happened to us, you can't, you would, you could, you can't make up in fiction. Well, I guess that's a good reason to have something like this. We can discuss serious topics, but as you can hear in the start, we often get distracted and sidetracked. And I, I loved hearing those stories. We should have a little seg- <laughs> yeah. segment each week with bizarre stories yeah, from the real estate world. Yeah, actually, that's not a, not a bad idea. No, man. Um, there's yeah, there's a lot. We've we've got we've got. Dozens at our office, and you guys would be able to dig up a fair few from the earth, I'm sure, Pat, if you thought about it. Oh, yeah, but that'd take energy. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, in in, in, uh, in answer to the question, are uh, some of the things based on true events? Some of them are. Yeah, no, it's just mm. good to get some feedback from, from people who actually listen. There might not be lots of them out there <laughs> just yet, but yeah, they wanted to know that. So I said, oh, well, I'll put it to John and we'll put it to record, and, and you'll you, be able to hear. Now, you mm. need to make sure that you don't tell them personally and see if they listen. Yes. Ah. Oh, that's a good, yeah, good plan. Yeah, I'll don't try go to. back and tell them the answer. Wait no, until I'll see. Yeah, yeah. And then they can be like, "Hey, Aaron, I heard that they are true stories." And you're like, "Yes, yes, they listen." <laughs> <laughs> We've got a follower. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, maybe we should follow up on um, something we spoke about previously. I know you brought in some info, John. Mm. Actually, this was a um, this one was only released from um, so. Jason, who was on with us last week, so his company and his um, chief economist that we spoke about, um, just on May the 21st, this one was um, linked. We'll, we'll, hopefully we should be able to put a link of this to the show notes. Um, but what it is, the, the, the title says, the tab has been turned on, uh, turned back on uh, APRA to relax assessment rate for um, to home loans. Now, um, to give you a little bit of um, just background on what that means is that if even if you've got a um, – APRA sets a standard on what people can um, – you know, what interest rate – that the banks need to assess a person at. Um, what, over, can you um, fill me in on what the acronym APRA stands for? Oh, Australian Property. Um, God, I can't remember. Myself. I was just reading through the article to yeah, figure what, that what out. That as well. Hey, I just said a mime like. Um, uh, the oh, one? there we go. The Australian uh, Prudential Regulation Authority. Oh, um, yeah, I've heard of those guys. Yeah, the, yes, never. <laughs> Prudential. That's a good word. <laughs> yeah. I'm going gonna, gonna to add that to my uh, the words that I learnt today. Um, yeah, so unfortunately I just learnt actually what APRA was. I, I knew the acronym but I didn't actually know the four letters. All right, we'll let you off. Anyway. Oh, um, yeah, my bad. I threw you out no, of the that's, bus there. That's good. I, I was sounding intelligent but we, we all know the truth of it. Um, <laughs> Bring him down yeah. a peg. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so um, – what, what APRA does with a, um, a mortgage lending minimum standard is let's just say you get a mortgage rate at um, 5%. What, what the bank needs to do is assess your, um, your pay, um, your, whether or not you can do repayments. If your ability to rate, pay the money back. That's it, ability to pay the money back if that went to, um, up to 7%. So I think the standard was um, either up to 7% or 2% above your mortgage rate, whatever was the – Highest. Okay, yep. so even though you only say have an interest rate of four percent or five percent or whatever it may be, mm. they worked out your repayments on a higher amount just so that they'll cover you in case the interest rates went up. Is that what you're effectively yeah, saying? Exactly right. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. then that would base on how much you could potentially borrow because they'd be actually working it out on a higher percentage. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Making well, sense. Yeah, absolutely. And then look I mean the handy thing about that, well probably where people have been denied finance in the past. I thought, well, what, the, what the hell? I thought that I was perfectly able to repay those. So well, I've used that online calculator and it said I could borrow it, but when reality comes, they've worked it out on a different number. Yeah, that's right. Okay. And so what 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 apparently the, the decisions are now is to just um, relieve that 
um, threshold a little bit. Obviously, I don't think there's any uh, specifications of what, um, what that's going to be, but it, um, it's not going to be as big a percentage as what it is from from what they're discussing. Yeah. So, um, in, in 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 that, then um, in terms of ter- the, the saying ter- turning the tap back on, is that it's going to give a little bit more flexibility then for obviously with a low with a low um, you know cash rate of one point five one point seven whatever it is. You know, even when the banks have given a really good mortgage rate, they're not going to have to assess it right up to seven percent. So it's going to give some people that little bit of flexibility to get so into the market. It could be really good for first-home buyers. So you put yeah. that in conjunction obviously with the grants that are available and the new 5% deposit scheme and now this. Mm. It's all things to help first-home buyers be able to afford property. Yeah, absolutely. And and that that's not nice little sort of um, – and probably first home buyers are the ones that would benefit from all this the most. Yep. Um, it did it did sort of counter to say, well, sometimes in that instance you might have um, be coming up against a second home uh, buyer. So it all applies to everyone, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, first home buyers, if coupled with all the extra incentives, were probably the, the those biggest winners. The biggest winners in this as well. Yeah, well, mm. it's always hard to get money when you're a first home buyer, and you're normally borrowing the largest percentage. Yeah. for your first home as you move on. Hopefully, you're starting to get a bit of capital behind you. Mm. So that makes Makes total sense what they're saying. Yeah, exactly. So with the election now passed and the Liberal government back in or still in power, Mm. does that affect the Labor's promise? I know they said they'd back the the same housing um, scheme. Do you know if that's still going ahead, Pat? Yeah, I think it's definitely going ahead. It was a Liberal promise first. Oh, they started. Yeah, and then Labor Labor backed backed it. it. So it's Uh definitely going to go ahead. I don't think it starts to January though, so a little bit of time before that 5% deposit scheme comes in. But that is a benefit to go along with With this this tap being turned on. Yeah, and obviously in Tasmania they added bonuses like the first home buyer scheme and obviously the stamp duty reduction for first home buyers. There's plenty of schemes out there that help first home buyers get into the marketplace, which should be great. Yeah, for sure. Mm, I think the biggest one that... post-election that uh, was sort of on the chopping block that people might have been concerned about was what was going to happen with negative gearing and a few other elements like that. So um, be curious to see now that all that, all that, all that, all that stuff's just gone and life will return to normal. Yep. Um, it should make confidence with investors, I think, and mm. keep them happy and wanting them to invest in more property. And obviously we need more rental properties here in Hobart. Uh, oh, there's a massive shortage. So yeah. yeah. Definitely a good thing all around, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I learned a new word the other day, speaking of new words, learning rent vesting. Rent vesting? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you guys know about rent vesting? Um, my understanding of it is that um, is that was just a fancy word of, oh, wait, no, this is where you buy buy a home and then live with your parents. Is that right? Yeah. Or, or, or you, 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 you purchase an investment property and then you rent somewhere else. Yeah, essentially, it, well, Nick Nadanui taught me about it on nice. a um, realestate.com ad. Oh, good. But So that he was um, <laughs> he was sports-splaining it. Yeah, yeah. Essentially, I think it was you buy a property in a place that you can afford. afford. And then rent in the place you want to live. Exactly. Mm. And mm. so you rent fest. So it was kind of a merging of two words. Yeah, I have a investor that does that on all these properties. He yeah. has four now in Hobart. And that's mainly because he can't afford to live where he wants to in Victoria. Yep. So he's buying them here, trying to build capital and pay them down. And then hopefully one day he'll sell them off and be able to buy the property in the suburb that he wants to live. That's exactly how Nick Nat said it. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> I think he described it as the players in their 20s yeah. um, coming in and and then as you get oh, – you're playing the midfield, but then when you get into your 30s, you start getting moved down into the um, – <laughs> Into the forward line just to <laughs> pick up possessions. He said he was close to it. And so. this was an AFL.com ad? No, this was realestate.com. Oh, realestate.com. So I, I love say, good analogies. Man. Yeah, I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it, it helped me. I was yeah. like, I've never heard of that and I wouldn't know what it is and, and now I do. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I mean, we had um, – well, like, yeah, with Pat's example, we've had a lot of um, young people from um, – the first home buyers from interstate. Um, I, it, it's been a while since I've helped anyone now, a few years now, but um, that was the same thing. Like they're based in Victoria. They've got all their, you know, that's where they're pursuing their career, careers. They might have been from Tassie originally or, or never been to Tasmania before. Um, and to secure their first home was going to cost them, what, like a third of what they were going to be from in their in their immediate area. Yep. So to me, um, I, I think it's actually makes sense in a lot of ways. For, fortunately enough, it's just um, not something that I've had to experience personally. Yeah, well, everyone goes through their different paths and, mm. and... I like it as an option because obviously uh, millennials have this vision of wanting the nice place in the nice suburb and it's not always affordable. Um, yeah. They are mm. more expensive. 
and it's a good way to get your foot in the door but still enjoy the lifestyle you want to enjoy. So it's a nice mix. I think it's good. Yeah, it's, it's sort of given that ability that we don't have to wait 10, 15 years to, to level up. It's yeah. just like get straight in. And and then the fear of when you're ready to level up, things have gone beyond your level. and Yeah, exactly. So yeah. Gain those experience points early. Damn straight. I'm sure there's like an RPG element. We could integrate this somehow. <laughs> you have gained XP. Yeah, da, da, ding. I was just thinking Mario stuff. Like. Yeah, that's all I think about is Mario. Ding. <laughs> well, it's like getting the mushroom that makes you bigger. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's and right. then once you've gone past that mushroom, you can get the raccoon tail or the fireball. And I can already hear the people clicking off the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're going to get extra listeners. They're like, oh, Mario. Your son will love it. He loves Mario. Well, he is one of our biggest listeners every week in the car. <laughs> Five-year-old loves it. You should hear Pat came in the other day and he said yeah. Parker wouldn't get out of the car because the show wasn't finished. He's oh, like, yes. I don't want to miss what you and Aaron have to say. Couldn't understand it was a pre-recorded and it wasn't live on the radio. Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So we got, we've got we tapped the six-year-old, five-year-old marketplace spot on. Right, we're going we're gonna to have to get at some sick merch soon. <laughs> Hell, <six> yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell <laughs> yeah. Well, I reckon uh, it might be a good time to jump into our deep dive for uh, this week. Yeah, so I think we're going to go into uh, my area of expertise. Mm. But we'll Ooh. have to plan out it and we'll come back and see. 414 Real Estate has been operating within the northern suburbs of Hobart since 2006. With their innovative approach to marketing and managing your property, they have all your property needs covered. Find out more by visiting them today at 414.com.au. Let's deep dive. Boom. What are we talking about today, Pat? Uh, we're going to talk about photos and what's acceptable in the marketplace today. Mm. So obviously real estate photos play a massive role when we're promoting properties for sale. It's one of our key marketing methods. So we thought we'd look into the different styles, how to go about it, what's involved and everything photos. So let's do it. Well, I might be able to start with, we've got, um, our company's been established for about, God, since 1982, 1986. Holy moly. It's been around a long time. Before we were around. Yeah, pretty much. But then, um, so how that evolved was, um, Dad got involved with, uh, sorry, there is a purpose to the story. Um, but Just be the first uh, time ever. Yeah, if, 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 Sometimes if, we wonder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff it, I'll get right to the end. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, we've got these um, newspaper art- articles that go back, you know, um, well over 15 years. So from just the exclusively classified before the photos, right from in bad photos to big photos to, you know, these newspaper articles for ye- years. Yeah. Um, but one of my favourite ones was actually, it's a sketch of a house. Oh, I've got some in my drawer. Do you want me oh, to really? grab one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that was before, you know, they even put photos in the newspaper for real estate ads. You could get, you could or- organise a sketch artist to, to go. Give, to go. Oh, like in a court of law where, it, yeah. like, they come in and draw the person looking sombre or happy or... Yeah, pretty much. It's just like this Mm. line drawing of a house in black and white and used to go in the newspaper. Yeah, cool. I'll add some into the show notes so people can see what we're talking about, but it's pretty amusing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You mentioned that. So rather than professional photography, you had a professional sketch artist to do like a nice little uh, photo of your home. And unfortunately, they went the way of Blockbuster. Ah. (laughs) Just gone. (laughs) Well, you've got a story about um, the way they used to use moving forward from line drawings to photo cameras back in the film days oh yeah so oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> did i yeah I did. so just so we're clear john and i weren't around when any of this happened no, but no. we've just had dads at both two real estate so we get a bit of like stories from the good old days i guess mm. uh one of my favorites is with the film cameras you're allowed to take four photos of a property and then you had to wait until there was enough listed properties for the rest of the film to be used <laughs> up so they could take it to the chemist to be processed. <laughs> then you get your photos back. If they're not what you actually wanted or they didn't look any good, you had to go take new photos and then wait for the next <sighs> film to be finished. <laughs> and most films are like 24 photos, so it's four. Obviously, you've got to get, you know, five or six listings before the... Yeah, so imagine if the listings weren't coming hard and fast. Yeah. Like we've, got, there, yeah. we've got people on the staff at 414 who, if their photos aren't ready after 20 minutes, they're... They're cracking the uh, oh, yeah. the whip. Yeah, three-week wait, <laughs> waiting for those <laughs> photos to come through. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> yeah. I guess it just goes to show how um, different the times were back then that if you were listing your property, it would take a while to get it on the market and, and things would go yeah. a lot slower, but we're living in a... A digital world now. Yeah, now, now, now. So And 
it's progressed over time. Like um, when I first started in 2006, I used to take my own photos and you would have been the same when you yeah. joined. Yep. You used to go with a digital camera, mm. take some photos, put them on the computer within five minutes. Yep. Now I'd be very surprised if there's anyone left in Hobart that are doing their own photos. Oh, it's, uh, without question. Yeah, very um, unusual now for an agent to take a photo of a property. It's now all done by outsourcing to professional photographers, which is where Aaron comes in. Mm, it uh, is where I come in. So obviously you do all our photos? Yeah, do all the marketing materials for all the uh, agents here at 414 and do some stuff for Me as well, McGregor. Yeah. And mm. yeah, so essentially go in and... Uh, not only take photos but now do 3D scanning, which mm. um, is like Google Maps essentially. You can walk through the property without actually leaving the comfort of your couch or your computer. Uh, we do video marketing materials, so not only is it photos but there's... Photos, videos, floor plans. We're doing social media videos now, which are little bite-sized videos to use in Instagram. So there's a lot of different components now that make up marketing. Mm. Um, but like... Even just doing the photos, it's not just taking them, coming back, putting them on the computer and them going out, is it? As? Oh, no, there's much more to it. So I guess you want to present the, the property in its best light and try and um, maximise its features and and present it in a way that is appealing to the buying market. Mm. So there's um, editing but not to kind of make it fake. different, fake or, yeah, I guess... So we're, you're improving it. Like at the end of the day, we talk about photoshopping photos, but we're not like making the property unrealistic. We're just adding more colour into it, brightening it up so it feels more appealing when someone is looking through the photos. It's really what it boils down to, isn't it? Yeah, well, I guess one big part of it is when you kind of are in a room and you're looking out the window, you know, your eyes are exposed to the interior light, the exterior light and everything that is part of it. But if you're mm. taking a photo... From inside. The camera can only do one or the other. Exactly. Mm. So a lot of the photoshopping that happens is simply filling in the backlight and filling in the outside exposure so that you actually get a feel for this is what the room looks like and this is how. I will see it with my eyes. Yeah. So mm. rather than being these blown out like, oh, I wonder what's outside that window, mm. you actually have an ex- a opportunity to see it. Yeah. As your eyes would see it. Well, that's where when – I mean, I remember looking back on the photos that I'd taken so – you you, you 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 know you try and you can capture the room as much as you can, but then of course then the window is just completely bright white. Yeah. Um. So that's when you're taking. So now you're like taking layered f- shots and then layering it over. So you got you captures the inside medium and then the outside. It, exactly that. Right yeah. Through, yeah. Yeah. So there there was a style of, the, of a high dynamic range of trying to get as much range in the photo and merge it all together, but it actually used to add a lot of noise. So when you see some of the photos that have really grainy and, mm. and lots of dots. That's all the noise that's come in from making that picture happen. Mm. So, um, yeah, what we're doing now is called a flash ambient method. And so you're kind of taking um, a high exposure flash, you're mixing that with some of the ambient light in the room and sometimes you'll have to get some light from other areas and bring it all in, but it's bringing it in to create a natural effect on the space that you're in. Mm. Yeah, and... Like us as agents, that's what we're trying to do. We're just trying to make it look like it does in real life. We're not trying to deceive people with making it look more impressive. Um, I know there's some bad stories out there. I've seen one in the past where uh, the photographer purposely chose to angle the photo quite low looking at the house and that was so the roof actually hid the big giant water tank or petrol tank or whatever it was in the backyard. (laughs) Actually, I I think they end up... Physically, digitally, digitally oh, did moving they? that. Oh, I yeah. thought they just like purposely <laughs> yeah. framed the shot. It was shots, both. So it it was both. Yeah. I feel <laughs> like there, I feel like there's one with a um, like a nuclear power stack somewhere uh, in Russia or something that's been removed, and it's like, oh, it's so beautiful. Like, come here. <laughs> yeah, big I, green tree put in. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think we're all talking about the same story, and that was one in Australia where it was. Yeah, it was a giant water tank, like on oh, directly behind the house. Yeah, and yeah. it was obviously wasn't appealing and didn't make you want to live there. So the agents and the photographer got a little bit creative. Yeah. And that's just taken it too far um, mm. because you still got to show the house at the end of the day. So people are going to get disappointed when they get there. So yeah, I guess that's one thing I try and do most of the time is, is think about the representation of the house mm. accurately. Like you can't have the photos show up online mm. and then have the agent go and show it. And the person's like, what the hell, what the hell, this is not what I was advertised to me. And surely that's going to put the agent on the back foot regardless if they're like, oh, well, this looked beautiful in the photos. Yeah, and of the way, my, my sort of turn of phrase of it, I want it to look as best as it can be. 
but not better than it is for that exact reason. Because you don't want that disconnect of I've fallen in love with the photos, but now I've walked through the home. It's just like I don't want this house at all. Yeah. I want I want that transition so that there's a natural um, affinity for the home on the digital arena. So then you walk into the house and go, you know what? This is about what I expected in a, right. in a good or positive, you know. So this actually is a good point to segue into another mm. section. Digital staging, like where we put in pretend furniture in the photos versus real staging of a house, John. Do you see that, is there any point doing digital staging or should you just avoid it? Because that's going to create that <clears throat> one appear online where the couch and the TV and everything's in the shot, but then people are going to go to the house and it's completely empty. Mm. Is that what you're talking about as well or should you just avoid that altogether and just hire companies to put furniture in the house to present it well we had um on there's a couple of points on this so we had a house in north hobart that we sold and the they they're they're good, good tenants but they just had stuff everywhere yep. you know it was over cluttered um and it was a beautiful old um, built in like 1910 so it had these nice high ceilings you know um beautiful wood frame doors but there was just there's just stuff everywhere. So yep. we actually had the stuff the digitally removed. Um, and with that then we looked at the photos as you know, with it removed and then looked at the photos with all the stuff in there. And I mean there was a huge difference. The ones without the furniture without the stuff in there looked much better. The problem was though is that when we go back to my first principle, which was I want it to look as best as it can be, but not better than it is. Yeah. We um, in discussion with the owner and the team, we thought Let's just roll with the punches and go for it. And luckily, what I mean, we're fortunate enough we were able to get a lot of, you know, sell, sell the property, obviously. But at least then when the buyers walked in, they knew what they were getting into. So um, you did go with the ones that the had clutter. the clutter? They had the clutter, yeah. So yep. there was so there's like a fine balance between um, – so in answer to your question, um, when it, my personal opinion when it comes to digital staging is um, have it um, accompanied with the original photos as well. So um, this is what it looks like. Like this a before and after like. like a before and after. Because at least that helps with perspective. Because yep. the whole purpose with staging in a lot of ways is that it helps um, give you perspective on what you can do with that space. Because naturally yep. with no matter how big the room is, it's – for a, lot, for a lot of people, it's really hard to give, see perspective on, okay, my couch is going to go here or I could buy here. And normally your natural idea is to just have the room close in and use it for less than you think it's worth. But, I mean, at my property, for example, I had um, the – when we were doing renovations at the moment and the builder just gave me a couple of little principles on how much space you really need. Um, and we just had the dining table shifted one way and he said, look, just push your couch one metre down and turn your table this way and bam, done. All of a sudden we had like the two – It's because we've got – an open plan yep. and immediately we ended up with more space and just made sense um, just by mere fact of moving the couch down that we'd just grown comfortable with. So do you think that the digital staging of a – like so say someone come, someone come into that room mm. and it was empty and then they were to put in the digital aspects, would that make the space look the way you want it to or would it change? So, yeah, I think what John's saying is mm. that Furniture helps, but at the same time, you don't want to trick people into believing it's one thing when it's not. So, okay, he's yeah. a fan of putting both photos up. Yep. Mm. So, it gives them the vision of what it could be, but then they're not disappointed when they get there mm. with an empty room. Yeah, so for sure. Have I, you ever, yeah. Sorry, you go. I was just going to say the only way you can improve from that is going away from the digital completely and mm. hiring a company to actually bring in furniture for a staging campaign where someone like Shift, who yeah, mm. we've used a few times. Yeah, so they actually bring in the furniture. You rent it from them for a period of four or five weeks and they're actually professional stagers slash stylers. So they actually mm. make the home and they do exactly what John was just talking about, about moving the couch in the right position to improve the room, yep. not oversize the room with furniture that doesn't fit the space yeah, and make sure. it look its best. Actually, that'd be good. Adam and Danielle would be good to get on here actually because that's, that's a whole other show in itself talking about physical staging yeah. Mm. yeah and that's exactly right we can look into that later but mm. i guess today was about photos so mm. we'll move on from that section yeah um, so well i think um what was gonna uh what was that last thought that i had not too bad it's gone <laughs> <laughs> <Never mind. Ding. laughs> i think there's a crickets button here somewhere <laughs> <sighs> story of my life <laughs> <laughs> all right mm. It's all good, I guess, for selling real estate properties, but we also need to think about um, rental photos. Mm. Like our agency, obviously, we're lucky we've got Aaron so on staff, so he's able to do all of our rental photos as well. So we treat, I guess, our rental properties the same way we do our sale properties. They get a lot of the same features. 
but we can do that because we have photographer and staff. How about you guys, John? You'd still be doing some photos yourself in the rental space or are you slowly moving across? We try and push as much as we possibly can. Um, we're, we're, we're the, unfortunately, the um, short-term price when it comes to landlords' perspective is they're going, right, well, um, if um, over the course of 12 months to get that, in, that look, unfortunately, when you're getting a new tenant in, the most of the cost that's going to incur to a landlord is, is in uh, the sourcing of the tenant um, and your letting fees and your management fees in that first bundle. And it's sometimes that get really hard to see the value of just, I mean, when you're negotiating on rental properties, you can actually get it quite a lot less than a sale one because you don't have your floor plan often. Um, you might do a few less. Um, but my perspective when it comes to rental properties, and I was the one who sort of introduced it to our business for that reason, is that you you get professional photos, that's going to last you at least five years. That's what I was going to say, yeah. is that you can at least get a good two or three years use out of the photos before they have to be updated. So mm. something that you need to push to the landlord and make them understand that, yes, it's a cost today, but it's going to be a cost that's going to help rent it faster, so days on market are shorter, mm. and we should be able to use it for two or three rentals before we have to replace or update the photos. So mm. it's definitely something that will help, I guess, over a longer period of time rather than just the short term. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, and look, the other thing of it too is that um, in in the Hobart market at the moment, because the demand's so high, the necessity of effective rental marketing is not as essential because yep. it's just the t- total demand. But the way I look at it again is that um, this is your one of your biggest assets. Wouldn't you want the best possible person that you could find? I mean, the num- playing the numbers game is great, but ultimately you could have enough hundred applications. But you're looking for the one that's like you want that person to look after your property the best. And I um I call it if you're a bad tenant, it comes with a bad tenant tax. Okay, so if you've got a property that might be worth three hundred dollars in the market and you put it at three hundred and fifty dollars in the market, you might find you've only got the um not the highest quality of tenants because they they come with a bad history and a bunch of other things that necessitates them to pay a high rent but if you've got you know an exceptional tenant with a great background um they may even come come with a dog that they love um and they've looked after their previous house for 10 years and they're, they're the best the best creme to the creme you could say yep. um uh, those people aren't going to be coming they're going to be looking for the best quality homes you know marketed well mm. so um when it, when when your when your property is in competition you want it to stand out as best as you can to, to achieve just as you would in a sale you're looking for the best buyer out there you're looking for the best tenants as well um and from my perspective i would not let any of my personal properties go on the market without professional photos yes we're only landlords out there if you want some professional photos done i am available mm. um i actually i'm Probably not at the moment. I'm <laughs> flat <laughs> chat, but <laughs> pretty busy. I'm You're very, very busy, busy but yeah. it's good to be busy. But um, yeah, if there's anyone out there that does need that, I'm sure that um, John can pass the information down on the line, and I'm happy to help them out on that front. Oh, it's just a no. It's a no. It's a non non cost as far as I'm concerned. It's yeah. just um, I'd, it, just it, as it's important as doing your maintenance. It's insurance. Um, it's just because the demand of the consumer now is a lot more than it was. Um, and um, so the more information we can pass on to um, potential uh, tenants as well, well, the better experience they're having when it comes to finding a home. Yep. Um, so at least then it enables them to make faster decisions and eliminate properties that might not suit them. And why should we treat tenants any different to purchases? At the end of the yeah, day, exactly. we're trying to move a property. It's yep. for rental, for sale, it's the same purpose. We're yep. trying to market a property, promote it, attract the right buyer or the right tenant and then get the deal done. So it should attract the same marketing methods. Well, the other thing too, I mean, I'd encourage, um, because we we assist um, private landlords and private sellers um, from time to time. And I've always put them in contact with our marketing crew because it's look, well, if you want advice on if you're going to get the best result, do it yourself, do it well. Um, and it's encouraging to see that um, even private sellers and private landlords are sort of slowly up to, um, seeing the benefits of getting these professional photos even when look, doing it themselves because mm. whether it through an agency or, or doing it yourself, fundamentally the product or the is still the property regard- oh, you know, ir- regardless of who's selling it or um, leasing it. So you still want your um, product to look as best as it can be. Yeah, without doubt. Mm. Definitely. Well, guys, I think we can talk about this all day. Oh, yeah. Um, God, we'll probably- and... There's, yeah, we have gone over our allocated time, but that's a very good sign. Oh, good. He <laughs> gave you the wind up and <laughs> you didn't see it. <laughs> I didn't see it. Not yeah. a problem at all. <laughs> Actually, just like when I'm driving along, I, I keep my eyes on the horizon and out for cars and I get told off all the time that I'm snobbing everyone. <laughs> it keeps waving past me. It's just, you know, 
Well, I wasn't offended <laughs> this time. <laughs> next time I'll next be throwing time. the arms yeah, in yeah. the air. And that, like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's a mute button on there. So if all of a sudden I cut out, you know what's happened. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Well, thank you for listening again to uh, the Property Pod. That was episode three in the can. We've gone a little bit over our allocated time. But as I say, I think that's a good sign. It means we've got plenty to talk about and... If we have to come back and uh, re-talk about this topic, I'm happy to do so and I'm sure the boys will be as well. Yeah, beautiful. So uh, signing off for now. Thank you for listening. Um, please like, share and subscribe. Um, Actually, that should be coming up on the all the major podcast things too, won't it? Yeah, I think this week we'll be able to go live on Spotify. Oh, actually we're on Spotify now, but um, mm-hmm. iTunes. iTunes and Google Play and all of those ones should be going live yeah. soon. Great, keep an eye out for that. Uh, any questions or comments, send them through. And yeah, hopefully we'll have a guest again soon. It was nice having Jason last week and mm. we'll see if we can uh, snag someone for next, for next week. Beautiful. Excellent, thanks, thanks guys. Okay, have see a good day. ya. As a family-run business, First National Real Estate McGregor understands that the property market can be stressful. However, with a strong team in both sales and rentals, we are here to guide you through the property maze. Find out more today at mcgregorfn.com.